guys in today's video I'm going to show you how I made this neon slab I start out with this aqua paint and then I use the glow pink paint and a glow green paint and this light turquoise and a cobalt and then also this metallic amethyst and these can all be found pretty much at any craft store and I use uh, Primo, Sculpey Primo here. You can also use Souffle Igloo, or if you have a favorite white clay that you use, this will be the base. And I always cut it in thin enough pieces that will go straight through the pasta machine instead of, you know, taking a chunk off and running it through. I like having you know nice thin pieces that'll just go through the first time and there it is so I ran it through the pasta machine at the third setting you don't want it too thin or too thick and now I'm cutting out a rectangle and then I also used primo black clay you can also use souffle uh, poppy I think it's called or poppy seed and then line up the white piece on top of the black and make sure that all the the black is covered with the white and now I run it through the pasta machine again make sure that the two pieces are together by rolling it out just slightly make sure they're stuck together and run it through the pasta machine at one of your lower settings, like a three, maybe even a four. You want it to be pretty thin. And I'm just cutting off that piece that had some black on top of it. And now you can get your paints ready. And this can go in any order. I start with the neon green but you can and you can use any color for this as well i'm just showing you what palette i used you could just do like neon green and, and cobalt or neon in this nice blue color and i'm sure it would turn out just as pretty and now just paint the slab i um i like the mixture of thick and thin brush strokes and then I leave a little bit of white but the less white you leave the better it looks um, it, once this is finished being painted you'll put translucent clay over it like I'm going to do now and when you run it through the pasta machine the paint all spreads out and then you can see a lot more white so the more color the better in my opinion so now I'm just going to roll out the translucent clay this is just regular Primo translucent. I really like the look of the white translucent clay by Primo, um, but the best translucent out there is actually from Cernit. So if you can get your hands on that, I would. Uh, it's probably the most translucent of all the clays. The Primo has a slight yellow tinge to it, but when you do this technique, um, you can't really notice it. So now run this through the pasta machine at one of the thinnest settings. <laughs> Sorry if you heard that. That was my son asking for chips. And instead of asking, he actually just goes, chips, 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 chips. <laughs> Hope you guys have nicer kids. <laughs> so anyway, um, now you just want to cut around it. And make sure you roll out the translucent over the... Um, slab just to make sure it's sticking on and I forgot to mention but make sure the paints dry before you add the translucent on I'm sorry I forgot that part <laughs> that's very important though because it will leak through and uh, it it looks a little off I've done it before and I mean you can fix it but it's better to let it dry first sometimes I use a hair dryer or a heat gun at like the lowest setting. 
So I run this through the pasta machine the long way and then I flip it and run it through again. I start at the first setting and then I work my way to the second setting and then I go to the third. So you just want it to be really thin. And you can really, uh, you it depends on how you want the paint strokes to be. If you want them to be really long, you can just keep it one way and run it through that way. And if you want them to be thicker, like I wanted mine, you can do what I did and just run it through the length and then the other direction as well. And now I just am ripping like uh, the skinniest strips that I can. Uh, it makes it easier to rip smaller pieces later on. So I'm just going to speed this up so you can see. I'm ripping off small pieces in the direction towards me so then you can see the black layer beneath. And you can use smaller pieces than me, you can use larger pieces, it really depends on what kind of earring style that you're going for. If you're going to do studs, I would suggest doing tiny little pieces because then you can really see the black outline in there. But if you're doing bigger pieces, you can get away with, you know, bigger chunks. I'm just doing a nice mix of the two. So you can use any shape you'd like, but I used a few different shapes just to experiment with this slab and figure out what I like the most. I'm using some stud shapes and the V shapes and some arches. And then you can bake them in the oven at 275 for 40 minutes. And here's how they turn out. I love how they look with the matte finish, but I'm also going to try a glossy glaze as well. Thanks so much for watching!